mass timbers char effect and protection of wood members in the event of a fire. Hey folks, welcome back to Two Minute Tuesday. Ricky McLean here. Today's topic is part one of a two-part series talking about the char performance and fire design of exposed mass timber elements. So in today's part one, we're going to focus on what exactly do we mean when we say the charring effect of mass timber members exposed to fire and how does that char occur? What is happening when this charring is taking place? All right, to take a step back, when we're talking about the char effect of mass timber elements exposed to a fire, we're doing this through the context of one of the two options that we have in the building code for exposing mass timber elements in the event of a fire and still being able to demonstrate their fire resistance ratings. If we turn to section 703 of the International Building Code, this shows us a number of ways in which are valid methods of demonstrating fire resistance ratings of structural elements. One of those options is using calculations performed in accordance with section 722 of IBC. If we turn to section 722, this states that we can demonstrate the fire resistance ratings of exposed wood members and deckings by using chapter 16 of the NDS, which is the National Design Specification for Wood Construction. If we go to chapter 16 of NDS, we'll find an equation-based method for demonstrating fire resistance ratings of exposed wood members. And this is all based on the charring effect that takes a place as mass timber members are exposed to a fire, where a char layer forms on all exposed surfaces of the wood. And this char layer forms as an insulative layer. And of course, this is key because what this insulative layer is doing is protecting the remaining cross section that we have left. Now let's say we're talking about an exposed glue lamb beam. We need to demonstrate that this beam has a fire resistance rating. We're gonna use chapter 16 of NDS to run through those charring calculations. And again, that design example will be next week. Today, let's talk about what is actually occurring and how is this char layer forming? What do we know about this char layer? All right, so let's say this is our exposed glue lamb beam. We're gonna look at this end section here. So this is basically the cross section that we have pre-fire. Now, what we're saying is that after the fire occurs, Essentially, what you see here colored in black is the char layer that's formed. So this is forming on all exposed surfaces. In this design example, we're assuming that the top side of this glue lamb beam was covered with a CLT floor panel, NLT floor panel, DLT, et cetera. Some panel was there, so it's not considered an exposed surface. Therefore, we're looking at these three sides of the glue lamb beam being exposed. If we're talking about a column, generally we're talking about all four sides being exposed. Now, because of a number of successful fire tests that have been done on exposed mass timber elements, we know and can predict at what rate this char layer is going to form. So first what we're using is a nominal char rate. And that nominal char rate is an inch and a half thickness of wood per hour of fire exposure. So that's the nominal char rate we're gonna use, but we are going to modify that to an effective char depth based on a given time. And this time is the duration of time that the mass timber element needs to be exposed to a fire. So we're gonna modify that to an effective char depth. And that char depth is also taking into account a 20% increase in the char zone and the heat effective zone penetration into the wood member. The reason for that is that we're basically neglecting all structural properties within that char zone and the heat affected zone. So essentially what we're left with is this core cross section that you see here. Now, if we turn to chapter 16 of NDS, what we'll see is that for a one hour fire resistance rating for something like an exposed glue lamb beam, that effective char depth is actually 1.8 inches, not 1.5 inches, which I said is the nominal char rate. Now it's not as bad as it sounds. When we look at this remaining cross section, as you can see here, it is a much smaller section than what we started with. However, we do get an increase in the allowable properties of that remaining cross section. There are adjustment factors within chapter 16 of NDS that allow us to increase the properties of the remaining cross section of wood post fire. That's the theory behind using the char rate and char effect to calculate the fire resistant properties of an exposed mass timber member. Again, come back next week. We're gonna run through an actual design example, show you the calculations that are used. Thanks so much for checking out this video. I hope this was useful. And as always, we'll see you back here next week.